Accessing library computer data. Hello Starfleet engineers and welcome to another episode from Captain's Dry Dock and in this episode we're going to be focusing on the interior. Not quite like this artistic representation of the interior of the Enterprise D but a more practical kit version of the interior i.e. making sure that it's fit for purpose for lighting up from the inside out. Now if you are going to light up this model or in fact any model which is based in space and you've got light on the inside and it's going to shine in certain designated areas of that model there's a lot of preparations and you have to make sure that you spend as much time on the interior than the exterior even though you're not going to see the interior and that's precisely it because the model is going to be glued together well this particular one anyway which means that you're not going to have much access to it once it's all sealed up so you have to make sure that you are super careful and very diligent of how to prepare the interior of your model now we're going to go over a few steps and some of them may be boring and some of you actually may know how to do this but please feel free to skip across because I've got a treat for you. I've actually managed to progress my electronics for this model way more than the sneak peek that I gave many of my regular viewers uh, about a month ago and you will see how many other bits and pieces I've added to the lighting and sound of my enterprise. Anyway, let's get going. Some of my regular viewers would actually have seen the first incarnation of this. Yes, it has grown exponentially and it looks like Spaghetti Junction. Look at all this, you feel like you could eat it and have some meatballs. However, it's all for a good purpose because as I've started learning more and more about the Uno and the Nano Arduino units and what they can do, I've requested and I've actually worked alongside with a coder to be able to actually expand upon the Enterprise D's lighting rig. Now, I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm just gonna play you the startup sequence of how I envisage this model model slowly lighten up bit by bit so let's just put the standby switch on as you can see it's lighting up the Uno which will then turn on the Nano the driver and that will in turn start controlling all the lighting and all I need to do now is press this magic button engage And there you go, that's a startup sequence. I hope you like it. It's uh, this is a lot of work that's gone into this. Uh, it's taken uh, me and another guy to actually work on it. I have no idea about electronics. However, I'm gonna show you what these other buttons do as well. Uh, so we've got ourselves the warp button and we've got ourselves the torpedo button. So if I press those, you, you can see what happens. So this is the warp button. And this is the photon torpedoes. So a lovely little detail I want to add in my Enterprise D is the idea that there's depth, there's decks inside and you can see in slightly. And that would be the main shuttle bay right here. And this is where one of the few parts I've had to go to Don's Light and Magic to get that's right, the main shuttle bay. This is an interior they supply. It's a resin piece. It comes in just a few parts. So you've got the, the main deck, which opens up to the doors. Then you've got, I'm assuming these are the, this is the control area right here. And then you've got this area here, which is the bay where you can actually park 
all the shuttles. Now, one thing I discovered is that you won't be able to see any of this once it's in there like so. In fact, all you're gonna actually see if you peer through here is this bit here and perhaps uh, the main um, flight uh, deck right here, the main uh, control center. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna include this and this, but none of this, because as you can see by my, uh, my, by my uh, Sharpie mark, there needs to be a hole here for the um, for the bridge so I can light it. So unfortunately, all this detail back here is in vain. So I do not recommend anyone buying this part if you feel like uh, you're not gonna do a cutaway. If you're doing a cutaway of the Enterprise, then this is great. But if you're just gonna close it all up and you just wanna see the, the main bay through the doors, then you can make this yourself. However, and there's a big however, it comes with the most cutest shuttlecraft. Look at that. I don't know if you can just, let me just zoom in. That is so sweet. It's very well sculpted and molded. This is actually, looking at my technical manual, is a Type 6 personal shuttle. So this is the main shuttle you would see on Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, I don't think you saw it in the movie so much. But uh, yeah, then, and you get a whole load of these. <laughs> Look at that, you got a whole load. So not only would you have enough for this model, but if you want to make other models of um, uh, from Starfleet, then you've got plenty of shuttles to choose from. These also resin, both sides, as you can see. You have to cut these out from and uh, deflash them. And to paint them, if any of you have painted 172 scale figures or Warhammer figures, then this is a perfect job for you. Now, one of the other strange things they've included with these shuttles, they've included the Voyager shuttle here. Now, I forget which type this is. Uh, actually, I'll probably uh, pop this onto the video in post-production. But as you can see, you can get and it was never, ever, ever in Star Trek Next Generation or in the movies. However, this is my enterprise and I, I'm going to include just one of these, just as a, just hiding in the shuttle bay. So if there's any true fanatics out there looking at my model, they can actually spot these and actually go, oh, that's wrong. And I'll laugh because then I know that they're one of us. So I would recommend get this kit if not for the deck, but definitely for these shuttlecraft. Uh, also, you get decals as well that goes on the main deck, and you get a lovely instruction manual here. But as you can see by the technical manual, there's no recognition of these at all. There's no runabouts, nothing. So. Uh, on the launch of the Enterprise, they only had these shuttles as well as the, the Type 15 pods. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have the pods with, uh, here, but I think if they did that, they'd be so tiny, <laughs> you'd lose them so quickly. Um, but there, yeah, that, that's lovely. And I'm gonna include these at the very, very end. So the first thing we need to do is sort out these windows. Now you can see straight through those windows and you can imagine if there's LEDs behind here, you don't want to have them glaring out otherwise it's just gonna look way too, way too bright. So one thing I advise, flip it round, get some 1200 wet and dry, and then start keying off the inside of the model. And what this does, this will diffuse the lights coming from those LEDs. So it's not gonna be like a super bright light coming out from one of the windows. To mask the windows, you actually need to, need to pre-cut some masking tape squares, just enough, just big enough to cover the actual window you want to mask. So the rule of thumb is, uh, any mask, piece of masking tape covering a window, that's the window that's gonna be lit up. Any window that's not covered up is obviously gonna be painted over and it's gonna be black. And so what I tend to do is get my pre-cut piece of masking tape, put it on the end of the blade, find the window, that I want to light up. Let's just say this one here, and I just pop it there, like so. Yes, I know masking all these windows is a laborious task. However, it's well worth it. Now, there's a couple of tips I've got for you that can actually make the job a lot more fun. 
one do not mask every single window okay it may look like that here but i've left loads of windows out meaning that there's going to be some cabins which are dark now there are many model makers out there who go a bit crazy and make their models look like a christmas tree now when you look at that it's not it doesn't have a sense of realism and that's what you want to do you want people to believe that this ship is occupied and some people are working they're at their stations or they're actually in their cabins but they're sleeping so you need to mix it up a bit as well as you not mean it doesn't mean that you actually have to mask up every single window two be a bob ross now there's an american artist who sadly passed away who is famous for painting these lovely landscapes from his mind and he would narrate as he actually painted almost like what we're doing now however he gave a character to his painting so he'll paint a tree and he'll say oh it's a bit lonely let's give it a friend and he'll give it a rock and so what we can do now is actually do the same thing but a lot more interesting with our crew members on board the enterprise d like so Okay, so we've got some cabins all the way along here. Uh, there's two windows, one window, one window, and two windows. And so let's just say this is Miles O'Brien's and his wife's Keiko's cabin. And they've got a daughter because they did have a daughter later on in the seasons. And so let's just say the living room, Keiko and Miles O'Brien are up and about. So that's going to stay lit up. And their daughter is asleep. And so she's only a baby. And so that's going to be her room there. So that's got to be black. So therefore, we need to mark off the living room quarters here and so when we peel this off that light will shine through and their daughter is fast asleep in the black room dark room and that will stay unmasked so when we actually paint black on top of here that will give the appearance that the, that cabin is not a light on the inside now you don't have to do this for every single window otherwise you'll never get round to finishing this model however for me personally there's one window i want to get right a little easter egg for those enterprise fanatics who know a lot about their ship and that's for me all good things it's the last scene where you see the crew together playing poker around the table and then the camera slowly pans out and you see exactly where on the ship where they're playing i think it's in riker's cabin so that would have been the top saucer section and so i'm going to include that on this model Once you've masked the windows that you want lit up, now we're going to have to spray on the paint. Now the first coat would be black because that's going to be absorbent and it's going to prevent light from shining through the walls of the model and making it look like a lamp. And so I would say I gave this about two or three coats of black. Then you're going to have to hit it with some silver. And what the silver does, that also helps uh, stop the light penetrating through the model, but it also has an added benefit of reflecting that uh, light back into the model and making the most of the LEDs you've got inside. Like most things that are clear on this model, you need to diffuse the light, otherwise it will end up acting like a torch, and that's the last thing you want. Well, unless you want that effect. So as you can see, the before and after of the buzzard round scoops, this is the red bits on the Enterprise D. So this is the before, pretty clear, and here's the after. So going in little circles with some 1200 wet and dry, get it nice and frosted. Ah, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of my vlog at Captain's Dry Dock. It was a very strange episode, wasn't it? Because we spent so much time working on the interior and no one's going to see it unless they watch this video. However, if you have lit up a model before, you can testify if you don't get it right first time, it's going to bite you on your ass later when you switch on that switch and suddenly there's loads of light coming in places where you don't want it coming from. And believe me, you do not want to spend all that time trying to rectify those issues. Okay, shameless promotion, can you blame me? As a career, I'm a graphic designer and illustrator. I know for why not make my own designs from the Star Trek universe? I love it so much and see if anyone likes them and I'll sell them. So I did. So there's a couple of places where you can actually get my designs. So the designs are the ships of Starfleet. That's the first collection. They also include the Romulan Warbird, the Bird of Prey, etc. And they're a fantastic collection. So you can have one or two or just collect them all. Why not? Help me out and fund, <laughs> fund this project. Um, and there's also the second collection, which is the Captain's of Star Trek. Again, lovely picture of the individual captains on their bridge with their name underneath. So there are two places where you can get those designs from. 
Display. Display is an American based company and if you've seen those uh, vintage films of the garage and the gas station in America or in fact if you live in America and there are those vintage gas stations around and they used to print adverts on tin plate. That's what this plate does. They print poster designs on tin or metal, metal plate. Uh, however, one thing I do warn you, they're a little bit pricey, but top tip, they are forever having a sale. They're one of those companies that have like several sales during the whole year, and they give out promo codes where you can get 20 to 30% off. So check that out, I've added the link below. Etsy, so I decided to actually open my own shop because not everyone wants a metal plate or pay that amount of money So I thought I'd actually print my designs on paper So if you go to my Etsy shop called drawing talks, it's exactly the same designs and the sizes range from around about A4 all the way up to A0 So check that out the link is down below. So thank you so much again for uh, following my vlog if you are vlog following I don't always put these videos up regularly uh, if you're waiting around for them because I want to take my time as I said on my previous episodes So what you should do is click on the subscribe button down below and that will alert you every time I get around to going an extra stage of this model also, if you've got any comments and advice making this model, believe me, even though it's like the 6th or 7th uh, Enterprise D I've made, I'm always learning and believe me, I want to make sure this is the last one because I want to make this one perfect. So I need your help as well, so point out any like little tips or tricks I can do to actually make this a fantastic Enterprise D. So take care, uh, keep an eye out for the next video and live long and prosper and carry on making those models. Library computer data.